I have not come to be the first. I have come to make sure that I will not be the last. In a wide-ranging address, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley spoke forcefully and passionately about women's rights and gender equality. The workshop serves as part of a series of interparliamentary exchanges and briefings with gender equality advocates and comes against the background of a notable increase in women's representation in political office in the Caribbean. The meeting included parliamentarians, ministers from as far away as Ghana, representatives from multilaterals, national gender machinery and civil society organizations. Prime Minister Motley stressed that gender equality plays a vital role in the sustainable development of a society. How do we ensure that what we see happening with the Me Too movement and what we see happening with persons like Rihanna daring to destroy accepted norms about what women should look like and what women should dress like and what women should be like, that those things have now to translate themselves to the basic aspects of the sustainable development goals, but at the level of our communities. Because if we achieve that, we've effectively achieved a large measure of sustainable development. Speaking directly to the parliamentarians in the room, Ms. Motley issued a clarion call to address a specific female issue. Single mothers of children must go and stand up outside in a magistrate's court and wait their turn to be called in as if you were taking an audit of stock that was not human to be able to determine whether you will have access to funds or not. But that if you are married, you go and sit down in the air conditioner of the High Court and wait for a judge to talk to you in the privacy of chambers. It cannot be right as we move to enter the third decade of the 21st century, that we perpetuate that kind of discrimination in our system. The Prime Minister believes education is the most liberating possession that can be given to a person, especially a female. More often than not, women need to be educated even perhaps more because we are not given the opportunities to be able to validate ourselves in circumstances without that platform of education as easily. And that is why the battle globally for girls' education, and that is why I'm proud when I see somebody like Rihanna at the front line of it, because we can't take for granted that which we have here, because it is a part of a global attitude that needs literally to be conquered against. The workshop ends tomorrow. Shane Jones, CBC News. Thanks, Shane. And we're also hearing that women's rights and agenda must be made a mainstream priority. Speaking at that opening ceremony of the Transformational Leadership for Gender Equality in the Caribbean Workshop, Speaker of the House of Assembly and member of the Parliamerica's Board of Directors, Arthur Holder, said this must happen to achieve sustainable development in Barbados. This is both an essential objective in its own right and a key aspect of the solutions we must shape to foster long-term progress across all areas of development. As an institution that convenes parliamentarians with diverse stakeholders, Parliament has played an important role in processes to ensure that gender equality and development go hand in hand, promoting the integration of legislative perspectives and sharing our good practices for the benefit of other parliaments. A representative of the UN Women Multi-Country Office in the Caribbean, Alison McLean, says the agenda for women must be seen and heard. This agenda must not be about or for the few, but for the many. This agenda is not a shopping list of demands which we think can shape the future of women. Absolutely not. It is much more than that. And that is why we are here this morning, to begin what we hope will be an honest, energetic, and comprehensive conversation about how we change, challenge, and counter the ecosystem of inequality, insecurity, exclusion, and injustice that inure against human rights, freedom, and democracy. 
Well, now to this story. The children are the first priority of the Education Ministry. These were the firm words of Acting Minister of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, Senator Lucille Moe, as she spoke to the CBC about student protests over the removal of vendors at the Grantley Adams Memorial Secondary School. Ms. Moe says with that in mind, Grantley Adams, like all schools, has policies and procedures that must be followed. Safety and security of children and their well-being will always be paramount. Now, schools have responsibilities to anyone within their premises. When adults, when parents and guardians leave their children at school, they expect schools to be responsible for the children. They expect schools to make the correct decision for the children. And certainly we would not want to do anything that would in any way be detrimental to any child and their well-being is always our focus. Well, Senator Moore says the ministry can only be responsible for vending on the school premises. We always try to have um, some level of vending activity on the schools from canteens to other types of vendors so that the school children will be facilitated uh, in order to get food at break and lunchtime, refreshments and, and the like. Once they leave school, then I have no control over that. What I will say is the policy is at all schools that children do not leave school during school time and wander the streets and interact with adults that they don't know, take things from adults that they don't know, and bring back onto the school premises. Schools have to be secure places, that are large institutions. Where Liams has over 680 students. And so therefore, you'd want to make sure and ensure that all the students at Grant Liam School are protected, they're secure, they're safe, and they're well being looked after. Minister of Home Affairs Edmund Hinkson is issuing a clear warning to those who are involved in human trafficking. Describing it as an extremely serious offence, he says the Immigration Department and police are obligated to investigate any such incident and will not be deterred from doing so. The minister made the comments in an official statement released today in relation to a joint operation on November 8th in which a female Guyanese national was detained. We will not be threatened or abused in any way from complying with our duties under the laws of Barbados in our various capacities and in seeking to ensure that the laws of Barbados are complied with and that issues relating to human trafficking are as far as possible removed from the territory of this country. Well, the minister revealed that the woman's passport had been withheld and she had expressed fear for her life, leading the human trafficking section of the police force to launch an investigation. Following several unsuccessful attempts to have the woman sent back to Guyana, she was subsequently deported on November 17th. Minister Hinkson says Barbados is party to the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime and legislation provides for severe consequences. It into the laws of Barbados. So a person who for the purpose of exploiting, and by exploiting it includes by abusing their position of vulnerability, fraud, deception, and such a person who recruits someone into Barbados is guilty of trafficking in persons and is liable to a fine of $1 million or to imprisonment of 25 years or both. Well, Barbados joined other countries across the globe today to observe International Men's Day. One of the major activities was a man-aware chatterbox corner at Jubilee Gardens. It featured several health and agricultural displays. Organizer Hartley Dotton is pleased with the response from the public as well as the exhibitors. We brought on board the AIDS, HIV AIDS Commission. You can see that right behind me 
they have their whole set of displays and, and um, information which is being distributed. Other groups that have joined us for this day of exposition are man aware, bringing to the fore men's problems, the challenges that they face with their health particularly. And we have the men's health groups. Well, some of the men on hand share their thoughts on the significance of International Men's Day. I appreciate this day as, you know, a blessing for all men, you know, because what vocal uh, speaking is that, you know, generally, you know, we men don't really got nothing. But as we could, I, I could speak for myself and all general for men, you know, that, uh, you know, that we could have a good time today and, you know, we enjoy the day. I'm satisfied. I'm glad to know that International Men's Day recognizing the contributions for men um, throughout the world. Well, meantime, President of the Young Men's Christian Association, Emerald Holder, has saluted men for the important roles they play in society. He also pledged his association's support to continue assisting young men. Here in the Barbadian society, we, are, we, we men are fathers, we are brothers, we are uncles, we are, we are providers of the home, we are the bedrock of 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 homes and we work very 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 hard to make sure that families are well well um, kept and look after in Barbados and today today I want to I want to stand out among the other men in word to, and giving kudos to men who has done their part and I I pray God blessing that we as a we as a YMCA we will continue to do what we what we normally do to look after young men. A St. George woman charged with her husband's murder has been remanded to Dodds Prison. She is Sieberton Miller of number 92 Rowans Park North and she appeared in court today to face the charge. CBC understands Mrs. Miller has been remanded in prison to reappear in the District B court on December 3rd. Now, this development comes more than two months after Cecil Miller's lifeless body was discovered in their home. Mrs. Miller was hospitalized following the incident, which occurred on September 18th. Mr. Miller was a former Barbados Tourism Product Authority chairman. The Barbados Road Safety Association will be embarking on its accident-free Friday initiative again. It will be rolled out at month end. President Charmaine Roland Bowen says the aim of the initiative is to encourage road users to be extra careful. On that day, we're going to be asking all persons, you know, to pay, to pay close attention to what you're doing on the roads, to think about yourselves, to think about your families, to think about the number of persons you would hurt, you know, if something happened to you or if you hurt or take away somebody else's lives. We want everyone just to try, you know, not to drive and use the cell phone, not to drink and get behind that wheel, not to drive if you're feeling tired, to give away that right of way. You know, just to think consciously for that day on whatever move you make on that road, whether you are a pedestrian, a driver, motorcyclist. We often hear the term off the beaten track, but that's exactly what we found when Coast to Coast ventured to St. John. Nestled deeply inside small town is a little village called Dr. Gill, which is sandwiched by two others. As I stand here, to my left, to my right, pardon me, plantation land, <coughs> the tenantry land, as, and is known as the rest. This area all to the right. Whereas on the left is technically more land. Douglas Brathwit or Harold to his neighbors has lived in Dr. Gill since 1954 and says the district was, as expected, named after the neighborhood physician. I was told by my father many years ago, before he bought the land, there was a doctor by the name of Gill who used to live in the area. Uh, in those days, the, name, the doctor was very, very eminent in any place. And they would always say, the people would always say, I'm going up by Dr. Gale, and that's how I got the name. Mm -hmm. 
Adult will always have good relationships. Mm -hmm. As long as you are adult to you, have it made. Well, this is all that is left of the house from where Dr. Gill practiced. And we wanted to drive you into the district as it is quite a way in from the main road. But neither the road's condition nor the rain allowed for this to happen. Ronald Howell says he wouldn't change very much about the area, but the physical conditions badly need attention. We used to ride scooters and all on this road. Box car. We, this road was locked way back and that's it. So right now, this road going, to me, is a disaster. When people go out walk and come out there, so on the night with groceries and then water, when the rain fall, it's a pun. Mm? No lady go to take off the shoes that you and, and walk through water barefoot. Mm? It's bad. From Dr. Gill, we moved on to another place in the parish with a very unique name and an equally unique story behind it. Exactly from our plantations here. You could come down this cat road, this cat road here. I don't plant the plantation. They got a cat road, you can go straight to the cliff. Then you put you straight off a monkey jump. That's Aaron White, and yes, he said monkey jump. True, but it near the cliff now, all the monkeys used to come up and they grow and eat the can and thing. Now you know that come back then. I born in 1960. With a little man, getting all in there, opening the side, and he put the slip with my grandpa, I been put the other my grandpa, grandpa was speculating and then thing. You see the monkeys, I need 70 and the 70s, 80s. Up to the, the 90s on, they sent the clear core and the plantation sell out now and different people who own the land, the land start, everything start going bad. All right, the land, the plantation, the dead all the cans, everything run down to the all past and brush now. But has he actually seen the monkeys? So they were about 30 and 40 monkeys, all the very good crunks there for the evening and the monkeys they've been the ground and all these monkeys running up with cans and things. They had enough monkeys. And during the gully there, trying to see if I can my dogs or anything like to trap down the artists, but the mothers are young as ain't them bellies and thing, right? And they carry the dogs down to see if we could get one hole. And that thing the man used to come from down here. But I always come to buy monkeys. And we catch the monkeys, we were selling the monkeys and thing, right? That was just one of the stories we heard behind the name Monkey Jump here in St. John. The other stories came from the book of Halls, Hills and Holes, written by historian Sir Woodville Marshall. Now, he said in his book that it was also the home to a number of poor white settlers that was established in the 17th century. And the area, he says, was eventually vacated between 1938 and 1949 after danger from rock sides caused by heavy rains. Now, these melopes are not at all what Sir Woodville was referring to when he said there was another significance behind the name Monkey Jump. They're much smaller and a little less scary, but he said it's also the home of the only native species of snake in Barbados, the grass snake. And I'm terrified of snakes, so I think it's time that both Ronaldo and I get out of here. With that, we made a hasty retreat, but we leave you with Monkey Jump and Dr. Gill, two little-known places in the parish of St. John.